Hi, my name is Sanam Naragi Andrelini. I'm the founder and CEO of the International Civil Society Network, where we spearhead the Women's Alliance for Security Leadership, a network of women-led peacebuilding organizations in 41 countries. Consultations between civil society and government and other stakeholders, especially the Department of Defense or the State Department, USAID, are critical because we need to hear from each other about our solutions, our, ch our challenges or their challenges, how we might have comparative advantages working on the same kinds of issues, and also to build a level of trust. If we don't talk to each other, it's very easy to have perceptions that are negative or stereotyped. In my opinion, the key priorities that we should be focusing on are actually the prevention of wars and the resolution of the existing wars in places like Yemen or Syria or elsewhere. And I think the role of the United States is actually critical because we are such a big presence at the UN level in regional settings and bilaterally, and especially because we have the WPS Act, which tells us that women have to be at the peace table. So what I would like to see is that the U.S. takes a very progressive approach to having de delegations of women peace builders in the peace processes that we support, fund, enable, um, and have a, uh, influence in. Another key priority, I think, is to look at the relationship between the Department of Defense and the military security partnerships, bilateral partnerships that they have, and really address things like rape and sexual violence by security actors. Uh, think about the issues of what do we define as hard security and, and soft security. A sexual violence is not a soft issue. It is a profoundly hard issue and it is a very complex issue. But if we could have the security forces actually being protectors rather than perpetrators, it would make a profound difference around the world in many places where we have um, engagement. Another key priority that I see in terms of the U.S. government is looking at how they can collaborate with civil society and the ecosystem that we have to get resources to the ground to women's peace organizations. Again, partnerships with us and other organizations. And, and related to that is how to integrate gender responsiveness into the DNA of humanitarian and development work, both bilaterally but also in the multilateral spaces. We need to see the U.S. taking, a, again, a, a forward-leaning role in terms of how the U.N. is doing humanitarian work in places like Afghanistan and, and elsewhere. Gender responsiveness and inclusive, inclusion are absolutely critical for effectiveness. It's very hard to be hopeful in the world today, given all the challenges that we have. But at ICANN, one of the initiatives we launched a couple of years ago was the She Builds Peace campaign, and it's allowed our partners to reach into their own communities to raise awareness about what it means to be a peace builder and the work of women peace builders. And what we're finding is that more and more people, young people, men, women, um, all sorts of people are actually interested in becoming active in peace building in their own communities. And I think harnessing that potential, harnessing the care that they have to be engaged in these local activities, and also in terms of dealing with the new challenges of climate and, and insecurity and so forth, I think there's potential there, and it's the one significant sort of light that I see uh, that needs to be tapped into, and I hope that we can continue to that work um, in the coming years. Thank you.